Welcome back again everyone. In this lesson I will be talking about how and when to use our trig functions. We use our trig functions Sokotoa when we are answering questions relating to right angle triangles. Now in answering questions relating to right angle triangles, we need to know the sides, the names of each side on a right angle triangle. We're going to look at this diagram right here where we see theta right here being x and theta right here is actually y. Now we need to understand what's going on right here. The first thing to note is that my longest side is always the hypotenuse. So that's one thing to make note of. The other thing to note is that when, if you look at the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is always exactly opposite of the right angle triangle. So right here is my right angle triangle and the hypotenuse is always across or opposite to my right angle triangle. Now the second thing to make note of is that when we're looking at our right angle triangle is that x is actually right here and if we look right here we have a side that is opposite to x and we also have a side that is opposite to y. Both of these angles have their own opposite sides. So right here is my y opposite. So here, this side right here would be the opposite side of y. So this would be my y opposite side. Or the y opposite, just call it that. Right here now, if we look here, down here, down here is actually going to be my x opposite. So the opposite side to x. So that's where I would like us to start looking. So, so in understanding that if this is actually going to be my x opposite, it means that where we see my y opposite is going to be my x adjacent. So here is going to be my x adjacent, right? And here, where I have my x opposite being right here, here also is going to be my y adjacent. And here is always only just going to be the hypotenuse. So that's the first thing to know. We have to always identify which side is the opposite of the angle that we're working with. Right? So if we're working with theta of x, that means we have to find this side that is opposite to the theta of x. Because if we're going to use, if we're going to try to find the length of this side using the value of opposite, then we're actually going to use the opposite over the hypotenuse right here which would have been sine and the same is true right here if we're going to use here again and the hypotenuse to find y we would use cos of y um cos we would actually use cos which is actually adjacent over hypotenuse right seeing that here would have been the opposite of y and to find y if we knew this side if we know this side and we also have the hypotenuse to find y, we can also use sine, which would have been the opposite over the hypotenuse. We're going to actually be looking at that. All right, so now we have three. If we look here, we have, actually have three right angles looking at right here. Now here, looking at our three right angles, right, we can, I'm actually going to give um, some values here. So I'm going to call here x, right? I'm going to say that my, my hypotenuse right here is, let's say, I'm going to give it 10 centimeters, for example. Right? I'm going to give all of them pretty much the same value. Right? Here, no, the hypotenuse, I'm not going to include the hypotenuse there. In fact, I'm going to actually name these other two sides right here. So I'm going to give this side um, a length such as 6 centimeters, and here I'm going to give it seven, 8 centimeters. Right here again, I'm also going to give this 8 centimeters. I'm just giving some numbers, keeping them all consistent. And here is going to be 8 centimeters. Right, so I'm going to also plug in x on all three. Now, if we were to look carefully now, so we actually have all of the sides labeled. Right, and we have here to be x. Now, in understanding how to use sine, so we're now going to fo be focusing on sine now. 
this right here if we want to find the, the value the value of when we're actually using sign there are two things that we can actually find we can find either the length the length which is the opposite right as we can see right here our opposite side would have been right here here as we know it is the hypotenuse so when we're using supper tower or trig functions and uh, the other thing that we look forward is that we are actually going to be either solving um, one of the, the side lengths right or the angle right so we can either solve the side length or the angle now when we are using sine in particularly it must be that either we are solving this side either this side is unknown or theta is unknown if theta is unknown then we would likely know the value of hypotenuse because we also need the hypotenuse to, to solve to solve sine so i should also write my formula for sine as we also have it as sine the sine of theta equals opposite over the hypotenuse and if the formula for for cos as we know it is cos theta equals adjacent over the hypotenuse and for tau is actually tan theta being equal to the opposite over the adjacent all right so with that being said is that the key thing to look forward is that if i am going to solve if i'm going to use sine so listen carefully if i'm going to choose to use sine to solve a question regarding right angle triangle it must be that this side either that this side is x which is the opposite either that the opposite is x and we know the hypotenuse right or that we know the angle so for example the angle right here is let's say um 60 degrees for argument sake so we're gonna just call say that this is 60 degrees right it must be the, if we know that here is 60 degrees it means that here would be the unknown so we would not know that this is eight centimeters for example so here would have been the value of x so we would not know that so we would actually have our formula being written as would have our formula being written as the sine of theta which is the sine theta in this case would have been 60 degrees so with our sine 60 degrees equals opposite opposite would be the x so remember if we are solving for x x also have to be in the formula so we have to include x and we would have to know our hypotenuse because hypotenuse is also a part of the formula for a sine so the hypotenuse would be 10. so we would actually solve it using a formula like that, that so that's how we actually come by our formula we won't be getting into solving it just yet right but we're just this is how we actually have it laid out now again if here if 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 here was the x if the angle was the x for example if the angle was the x and we know that here is eight centimeters right we would actually have the sine of x in this case we would have sine x and then we would have the opposite right here would have been eight over ten and that is how we know that we're actually using sign because the opposite is involved and the hypotenuse is also involved right theta is also involved so that's how we know when it is sign now looking at cost for example now the cost right here is that in in looking at cost we always we still look to find the opposite side anytime you're giving a right angle triangle you always must identify your opposite side so this again would have been my opposite side so an opposite side is not a fixed side it's not everything you're gonna see that here is gonna be the opposite so like here would have been the opposite it, the opposite means that it is opposite of the angle that we're working with so if we choose to work with angle X this could have been another angle right here but if we choose to choose angle X the opposite side of X would have been pointing to here so in solving the cos of theta right in using this now say for example that theta here is x because we have x up there if theta is x it means that we're going to have cos of x right being equal to adjacent now if this side is my opposite we already know obviously that here's my hypotenuse and how do i know that because the right angle triangle is always directly opposite with the hypotenuse 
right so here is the hypotenuse and it's always along this side as well right and we say here is 10 centimeter and the others are are less so here now right here which is eight centimeter obviously would have been the adjacent side because if here's the opposite here's the hypotenuse then we're left with the adjacent side so this being the adjacent side of theta we would actually have cos of x which is this x right here so if we're trying to find x right here and let's say we don't even have the value of this so the question would have had it that you wouldn't know the length of this you wouldn't know what here um is but we need to find x then in a case such as that you would actually have cos theta equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse so here would have been the adjacent which is actually 8 and our hypotenuse is actually 10 right so that is how we actually work out um, the whole concept let me just put this a little bit higher 8 over 10 right, it's still a little bit short right so 8 over 10 all right so that is all the whole concept we actually work out x so what happens is that you would actually divide these and then find the cost inverse of that we'll be getting into that but the cost inverse is written as cost inverse of the answer so if this is 0 0.8 we would have the cost inverse of that is equal to x and whatsoever that is equal to is the value of this angle right in degrees Right, so that is just that. As I said, we're not going to get into solving it just yet. We're just getting into understanding it first. All right, so cos theta equals adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that is literally how that is done. Now, it, again, if here, if we knew that here, for example, if we knew that here, for example, was, let's say that this value right here was, was 40 degrees. If this was 40 degrees that means that if this is 40 degrees and you're using cost to find this angle it means that the adjacent side would have been the unknown so here would have been x maybe you would have actually known this side you know but if you know this side normally when you're given to use um the trick function to solve a question one side is x and the other side is not given so that's something to also look out for so one side is x the other side is not given in this case this side would have been not been given right so what would have been given is the hypotenuse and and theta either that theta is x or the side is, that is opposite to theta is x right to use a sign here now we would have likely been given the hypotenuse to use the cos right so we would have been given the hypotenuse and the adjacent would have been x and the angle would either be x or 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 be known either it is 40 degrees or for or some degrees or we are trying to find the degrees and here would have been known so this is how it would look if we're trying to find costs right now you might ask yourself what if the hypotenuse is unknown is unknown so if the hypotenuse is x then we would have likely know this side which was eight centimeter right so this side would have been the adjacent side again so under here now where the hypotenuse is we would have put x and it would be the same thing here right we would know this angle which would we said 60 degrees and the hypotenuse in this case would have been the x so we would actually where h is we would actually put x so that is the case in which we're actually solving for the hypotenuse then we would actually, if we're if we're gonna find x, the fact that x is at the bottom, we could just a little trick in terms of um transposing our formula, we could just swap this cos x and put cos x at the bottom and put the value of x right here. Well, this would have been cos 40 degrees. So we could put the cos of 40 degrees under here and put x equals 8 over the cos of 40 degrees. Just just an idea of quick uh, way of transposing that, right? so that is how you would solve the cost um of if that's how you would use cost to solve x so here you know the opposite would have not been given still and you would actually get this side if you're trying to find the hypotenuse along with the angle now look at tan for example now right now tan here is that if you're given tan if you're given to find 
um, to use tangent, right? The tan theta. We always, as I said before, identify the opposite side. In this case, the opposite side is at the top, right? So the opposite side to x is at the top, right? So in using this now, is that we would actually see, if, you are, if I'm given a question, let's say I want to find x. In this case, we would actually need to find x. Your tan question would actually look like this, where the up hypotenuse is likely not known. It's not that they can't give you the value of the hypotenuse. We could give you the value of the hypotenuse, but if you had the hypotenuse, you could have used sine to solve it. You could have used cos um, cost to solve it. You could actually use tan to solve it. But if you just want it, the students to actually use tan to solve a problem, you just give them the opposite and the adjacent with the hypotenuse being unknown. The other thing is that some students would be uh, brilliant or you know they would really think ahead and say, all right, no problem, I can go ahead and use Pythagoras theorem to solve the longest side. So that also can work, and then you use sine or cos to solve x. So that too is, can work, right? So there are many ways to come up with some solutions. So let's understand tan, all right? So we have the opposite, and we also here would be the adjacent. So if you're going to use tan to find an angle, right, is that to find an angle using tan, the, the angle would have been the unknown and the two sides would have likely been given. Now what if we know this, the, um, the angle, say for example angle is 50 degrees, right? Then it's highly likely that one of these are going to have the value of x. Because now we're going to find the length of one of the sides. So either the adjacent is going to be x or the, or the opposite is going to be x. So that's literally how tan questions are given using tan. Right? So that's basically how we actually know how to use our trig functions. So the first thing to note is that trig functions are given to are given um, to solve right angle triangles, right? And also that whenever a missing side is given and you have theta present and you also have one of the, the side lengths, we actually we are going to be required to use a trig ratio to solve it. Now, if you have two sides, um, this, this is the two side lengths present, and you need to find the third side length, and you're not given, that, given an angle or theta, you know that, that instantly calls for Pythagoras. But once the angle or theta is involved, you can almost say, get ready to use your trig functions. So once theta is involved and it's a right angle triangle, you can almost think trigonometry, trig functions, Sokotoa, right? So let's remember now, when using trig functions, it is the tan or theta must be present. So theta must be present and a side length should also be present or given or you can find some way to work out one of the side lengths. So some questions are given where you actually use something to find a side length and with that now you can apply your trig function. So um, trig functions are only used on right angle. Um, theta must be present. So these are just some tips now to know when to use um, trig functions. So theta must be present, must also be a right angle. And also, usually one side length is given and the other one is, is the missing side length to be found. If it's the case wherein you're trying to find theta being x, if, if the theta is, is, is the what is to be found, usually theta would be x. And remember, it must be a right angle triangle. And also, you're given... Um, two of the side lengths. All right, so those are what you use to know when to use your trig functions. Okay, so that takes us to the foundation of knowing when to use your trig functions. Now, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and uh, stay tuned for the latest update. And in my next video, I'll be talking about how we use trig functions to actually solve given questions.